Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. Normally, Jamie and I go live at 10 a.m. every Wednesday mountain time, uh, but you can see that Jamie is not here. She is not feeling well at all. Uh, she's been sick all night, so she's not going to be joining us. There might be a chance she'll pop in later on in the stream and say hi, but don't cross your fingers or hold your breath for that. Uh, so Waste Not Wednesday, we usually take stuff that we've either found that's slightly broken, needs a little bit of repair, and, and sometimes we just paint stuff because it's fun. Uh, but today I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to need your help, though. Uh, lots of comments, lots of questions so that I can kind of play off you because I don't have Jamie here to keep the conversation going. And we all know that she is the best conversationalist and has the most interesting things to say. So I'm going to try to keep it interesting and, and we're going to do some fun stuff. I've got some cottage color out. I want to do some smoky finishes on these candlesticks. We've got a couple things with air dry clay that I'm gonna do to them. I've gotta fill these holes. This clock came, it probably had a handle on the top of it, but it's just got two holes in the top. So I'm going to, this is the only knob I could really find, but I feel like it's the right size. And we're gonna put that down in there today and then paint the rest of this stuff up. Got this urn and then this lone candlestick. I did a creamy finish with a wash on on a piece yesterday for channel membership. And I'm probably gonna do this one the same, uh, but I wanna go like a two-tone on these cause they have more detail, but let's, let's get into it. Oh yes, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning, joining me. <laughs> Caitlin is here, she's dropping links and saying hi and uh, she'll be in the chat. She shows up as Jamie Ray Vintage in the chat, um, but I'm gonna get to painting cause I have a lot to do Jamie would normally paint all of this for me while I worked on one piece repairing it and then it'd be ready to go for finish work. Uh, if you guys have seen her paint, you know what I'm talking about. But let's see, air dry clay first off. Let me move a couple things out of the way here. But yeah, today is the day. If you have like burning questions on how to repair things, uh, paint finishes, things like that, uh, please drop them in the comments and I'll answer those as best I can. So I've just got air dry clay. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to put a little glue. This is just wood glue. Um, if you saw Saturday, we, these had like some funky metal press tin looking petals hanging off of them. They almost looked like palm fronds. They weren't, they weren't that great. Um, and they do have like a weird paint texture finish on them. So we're going to repaint these. They were a match set, even though the bases are different, but there's sharp little pieces where I broke those off. And that's what I'm doing here. I've got the air dry clay. I'm just gonna force that down in there so that that removes these sharp pieces. I was gonna grind them, but it's so delicate right here at where it, where it comes together. I'm worried I'll grinder the top of this candlestick right off. So I'm just gonna fill it with some wood glue and the air dry clay. I know, wood glue is probably like a lot of uh, people would probably use construction adhesive on metal, but I found with the, uh, the air dry clay from IOD, which is what we use in molds. Uh, we also use it as like a wood filler <laughs> or metal filler in this case. And it works out really, really well. So I'm just pressing this down in here. I'll show you guys up close in just a second. If you see me glancing over, I'm just looking at comments and trying to catch everything. It's like Sab Sabrina's joining us from Australia. What time is it in Australia right now? We've got Leslie on here and Jamie's sister, Renee, all kinds of folks. There's already 229 people watching. I don't think I could list them all. Yeah, Renee's, Renee's giving you the deets. She's, she's got a stomach bug. <laughs> all right, so this is not pressing as good as I wanted. We are we are fresh off of Thanksgiving. Hopefully all of you, all my uh, US people joining me today had a great Thanksgiving last week. We had an awesome Thanksgiving. It was so low key. We went, we were in the middle of redoing these floors, which are done now, by the way, that video is actually up on the Jamie and Zeb channel. Um, but the floors are done. Not my best choice to do it over Thanksgiving break because the kitchen was blown up Thanksgiving day. All the chairs were in the family room and the table was in 
<clears throat> excuse me, and the table was in the garage. <laughs> and we we came home, we, we went out to eat because um, there was no cooking in here. And then Caitlin and her family joined us. And then we uh, we came home and had pies and we all just had pies around the, the island here. <laughs> but it worked out. Pies were delicious. It was fine. Oh, Angela has seen the video. She said, great video on the flooring. It, you know, it's it's fun. That channel is more of like a vlog style. So every now and then the kids pop in. We don't see them a lot on this channel just because when we do these videos, they're typically at school. But that that channel, I am film like pretty much all the time, day and night. And, you know, sometimes they're a little shy and they don't want to be on camera and that's fine. We don't, we don't ever be like, Hey, you got to be on camera. So this is a little, little wonky because my air dry clay was drier than I wanted to be. I could probably get this wet and really smooth it out, but it served its purpose. There's already some texture and things here. So what I'll probably do is when I paint that, I'll just see what it looks like painted because it's going to look a lot different painted, but that gets rid of the sharp edges. But anyway, the kids kids were helping on the wood flooring. The deal, Eliza came home from cheer practice and she was just gonna die. She was starving so much. So I uh, I was in the middle of doing the floor and I don't even know if Jamie was home. I think she was gone. Um, I'm like, listen, Eliza, I'll make you a deal. You put in some of this wood flooring and I'll make you a loaded baked potato because that's what sounded good to me and I needed to eat too. Uh, <laughs> and she agreed and I showed her how to put the flooring in, uh, it didn't take very long. Redrick and Jack were over there helping too. Uh, and they, they did like two or three rows of flooring while I made, <laughs> made some baked potatoes for everybody. Um, but that's kind of the way it goes. We, uh, you know, they just, these kids have grown up around Jamie and I doing projects. It's been eight and a half years now that we've been, uh, doing this together full-time jamie was doing it before i quit my job and she actually she she likes to remind me i gotta quit my job before she did she gotta quit hers because she was doing in-home daycare i think she had four kids three or four kids when i quit um she kind of pared down to a, a few less kids i think at one point she had eight or nine maybe not quite that many maybe six i can't remember it's been 10 years ago now uh, but, and she was also processing like pre-processing loans from home for, for a company <laughs> and she kept doing that three or four months after I quit my job. Um, and she was still doing all the Jamie Ray vintage stuff on the side, finishing furniture. We actually didn't start doing videos until I, I quit my job and came doing this full time in April and we didn't put our first video up until that August. So we're just a little over eight years on having videos. Kelly says she loves the Jamie and Zeb page and Carolyn loves the floors. Yeah, the kids did do a good job, Carolyn. They, there was a couple little spots where I was like, hey, that gap's too wide. And I had to step away from the potatoes and go be like, hey, you got to nail this in harder. But that nail gun, when you hit it, it, it pushes it up tight. Renee, I need you to teach Austin. Uh, she wants her floors done. Well, you know, next time I got a project, send him up here. Because <laughs> I could use Austin's help. He's good help. Austin is Jamie's nephew. So Shelly says, bought a coffee table for cheap, in great condition, except for small corner area where a dog got a hold of it. Do you think Bondo would be the best way to fix it? Yes. Um, it's it's probably way back archived um, on, on how to fix that, but I have used Bondo to fix the corner of a coffee table somewhere on the channel. I have no idea. If you look up furniture, like Jamie Ray Vintage Furniture Repair and then put Bondo, that video might come up. But what I did was I clamped a board underneath so I had a good flat surface under the lip. I clamped the board on there and then I put the Bondo on top and then I sanded it to shape and it, it held super strong. It was great. Right. That's, that's good enough. We need to, we need to get to painting something. 
Um, so I'm going to do, where's my crockery? Did I not get my crockery out? Here it is. Nope, that's gray skies. Oh, that's right. I was going to do gray skies. I thought I had crockery out too. I might have to step off camera for just a sec and go grab my crockery. Um, but I wanted to mix up some blue hills and some gray skies and see if we could get a really smoky blue color. Blue hills is already kind of smoky. This is the cottage color that's the single step all in one. Love using it for thrift flips um, because as soon as you're done painting it, then then you, you don't have to seal it or anything. Um, it is not this blue. Can you guys see that? I need to stir this up but I don't want to use, Jamie likes to use a kitchen knife. I have this, we're going to use this. But with this paint, when you get it, scrape the bottom because it does have a built-in sealer. So it separates um, if it's been sitting for a while. So scrape that bottom really good, stir it up really good. If you just shake it, you're not going to get those pigments off the bottom of the can. Caitlin's dropping all the links for the paint if you guys need that. Yeah, it's a little weird doing it by myself. Everyone's asking where Jamie's at. Uh, it, it is a little weird kind of being up here by myself because Jamie and I play off of each other pretty well. Like we know we know all the answers and what the other one's going to say for the most part because we spend all day together. So it's just really easy. It's got a not natural flow to things. It's a lot of fun to sit here and hang out with you guys while we paint some stuff. I'm trying to keep up with comments, but you guys are doing such a good job commenting. They're flying by. So Vicky Zach says the floor is nice. Is the floor you tore out usable for anything? So we actually, the flooring in here, and I'll show you, I'll, I'll do a pan over there in a sec. So everybody that hasn't seen that video knows what we're talking about. So we had the original 1917 floors um, in here when we remodeled the house and we left them because we loved them, but they were pretty damaged. They, they some Someone before us had already carpeted over the and and there was linoleum in a few places there's like three or four layers of other flooring over the wood floors that we had to remove and and we uh we left the floor down there but it didn't have any subfloor so it moved it creaked when we painted it the boards would crack and move and we would get big gaps in the paint in between boards because they were so worn and we were going to repaint it again i'm like jamie we're going to spend $500 because we bought like pretty nice enamel type paint to put on the floor. Like we're going to spend $500 to do these floors. Why don't we just get some oak? It'll be a little bit more, but we'll have it done. And then I won't have to worry about these floors before I die. If we live here the rest of our life, I'll never have to redo these floors. Um, and these match the rest of the house. We did a utility oak. So it was like $1.95 a square foot makes it pretty cheap. Um, uh, but so we didn't rip the old floors out all that to say we didn't rip the old floors out we left them in uh, so that we could have a subfloor under that I have to step off camera real quick I got to grab another spoon I'll be right back but to answer your question Vicki if we had taken those floors out they totally would have been usable oh that is the wrong wrong one uh they totally would have been usable for another project like i might have made like some coffee tables out of them like coffee table tops or even like a small dining table top out of them would have been pretty cool to do something like that uh but they're still in here they're underneath <laughs> and like i said like these these oak floors that we have in here they're gonna out outlast me So I think Caitlin dropped the video. Is that the Bondo video I was talking about or is that the floor video? Susan Todd, Jamie is sick. So she she won't be joining us. You you only get me, so hopefully I don't dry clear eyes you guys too much. I can I can get a little like monotone and explaining things when I'm doing projects. I mean, look at this. We're we're what? Like 15 minutes in. 
16 minutes in and I've only done a couple repairs and haven't painted anything. If I had Jamie with me here, we'd have all this painted already. Well, she would. All right, mixed up my paints. I'm gonna add, so I'm probably one part gray skies to five parts um, blue hills. And I wanted, I'm trying to get a smoky blue. This gray skies is pretty, pretty potent. So I might have to add more blue back to it. But I tried to mix up enough that, yeah, that's going to be good. I think that's what I was looking for. I'm almost going for kind of like a skeleton key. I might add just a touch of the white linen in here. You guys can see kind of how smoky that's getting there. I'm trying to mix all the gray in so I don't get like a swirl finish or like, like a, the drippy, the, the paint, pour paint finishes. Let's see. Oh, I need to refresh my comments. Vicky Zach, yeah, there's a lot of people doing lots of videos right now. It's it's the holidays, so usually after Black Friday, we slow down a little bit. December is actually um, probably our best month to get caught up on things because you would think January would be the slowest, but after Black Friday, a lot of people hit those sales and they're pretty stocked up. Um, so December can sometimes be our get caught up, relax, and uh, make some new product design month. So that's that's on the plan today. We still have, I know on the other channel, everybody's been hoping I'll get that cottage done. I have not stepped foot in there in a month. <laughs> um, it's it's been crazy around here getting back from England and getting that thrift haul all the all the stuff we bought there we got it all up on the website within I think by the time everything arrived it was like two weeks after we got home and it was all up all list I think we have like a couple little things that are that I need to list because they're like art and things I bought and I have the dimensions and the pictures on my phone for those. But for the most part, it's, it's there on the website in the collection and there's not a lot, actually a lot left of it. There's quite a few things that have already sold and they're gone. Oh yeah. Buttercup said bye-bye to buttercup too. Yep. Buttercup, our cow was not pregnant. If you haven't heard, and that's on me because I should have had her checked way earlier. I was going off of like visual cues and expecting her to come back into heat and she never did. Um, probably because there's not other cows around her. She's got a couple horse friends over the fence from her, but if she'd had other cows, she probably would have come back into heat, but she didn't. So I was just like, all right, she's pregnant. And so I started feeding her like she was pregnant because I don't want her to go hungry, you know? And so she got real fat and looked like she was pregnant. Even my cousin that's delivered like 200 calves at a dairy was like, yeah, that cow's pregnant. And then he uh, checked her. And he's like, this cow's not pregnant. She's just fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I sold her, I guess it's been a week and a half. She's getting picked up, hopefully Friday, if everything works out and go into a new good home. So she's she's gonna go. I didn't, if you watched, I'm, I'm not gonna get into it too much because I covered it all in the video why there's several reasons why we're selling her and, and moving her on to a new home. But uh, it was good having her. Uh, Eliza is lactose intolerant and she has that A2 protein um, milk. So it was good to help her. She was able to tolerate that and eat all the dairy products and things were good and she doesn't really have any dairy issues much now that i've noticed she just eats and drinks whatever okay can you guys see that one is kind of popping up over there smoky blue all right yeah carolyn said buttercup was just relaxing and eating yes she was she was just chilling back not getting milked i haven't milked her since july i dried her out in july thinking she was going to have a calf in september uh, <laughs> uh but yeah she's just been hanging out and eating loving it we had tons of garden scraps that she just ate up because i did wasn't worried about what her milk tastes like sometimes when you feed them uh different foods their milk tastes like whatever you're feeding them 
uh, but she wasn't, I wasn't milking her. So she got all kinds of good, yummy stuff out of the garden leftover. She helped us clean that out. She loved it. All right. What do you guys think of this color? It's, it's blue Hills, but it's, it's got like a smoky color to it. It's a, it's, I don't think I quite got, I might had to have to add more gray and even a little bit of white to get the skeleton key color. Skeleton key is a DIY clay color, clay based paint. Um, and that one is one of my favorite all time colors. I know we paint a lot of things like blue, white, greens, but to be honest, that's, that's what sells for us. It sells really well. We mo like this, you saw that big old thrift haul. Most of that from, uh, last Saturday's either already at the shop or being shipped soon. We, you know, I got, I got a shout out to you guys. Thank you for shopping with us. Our little business did so good over like the black Friday, uh, small business Saturday, cyber Monday weekend. We did amazing. I think we'd be, I, Caitlin knows the exact percentage cause she was looking it up, but we did a lot better than last year and it's a huge blessing to us. So thank you guys for shopping. Let's see, did someone? <laughs> Mel says, just started watching in the UK. We love Zeb chat. <laughs> All right, Wendy has a question. Zeb, I have an old dresser that has a lacquered finish that is extremely dented and impossible to move. How do I fix it? So the lacquer has like dents and dings in it or the actual, is it like dented? Like the actual wood has dings and things. Um, either way, I would probably sand it, you know, scuff it up, get it, get, probably do like some 80 grit on there or something. Uh, you don't need to full sand. You're just trying to distress that lacquer enough that it'll have some tooth for some paint or something to sit to. And then depending on how dinged it is, I would go back through with like a Bondo or a wood filler. I prefer Bondo because it smooths out and sands better than wood filler in my opinion. And if you don't need to like color match or stain it, if you're just going to paint over the top, um, I would go that route. But uh, I would fill those dings and then, you know, sand that smooth with the Bondo and then you're good to paint over almost like you're doing like car work, but do like an all purpose. I don't know. Is that, I don't know where you're at, Wendy. I don't, uh, all purpose Bondo get it at most hardware stores. Okay. I'm going to bring this close so you guys can, that camera is looking kind of bright. We've got pretty good weather right now. It is cold. It was 20 degrees last night. The night before was 17 degrees. Um, but sun's been out. We do have a snowstorm coming end of the week, I think. So we're, we're getting about a storm a week, which I can handle if it snows and then gives me a week break. I can make it through the winter just fine. When I got to go shovel the, the snow at the shop and the walkway uh, every day, that's when it gets a little tedious. But, oh, so you can see that repair is there. I might come back even more and do, I don't know, I might, I might try to add a little texture. But it's got some texture stuff. That just looks like where it was molded. So I might do a little more paint. That's probably going to need a second coat. At my current pace, I don't even know if I'm going to get get to break a heat gun out. <laughs> um, but I think since I've got that mixed up, I'm going to do these that same color. And then I might do like a wash over these to lighten these ones up. And I have this one as well. And hopefully we'll have time to at least get the knob on this and get some paint on that one. All right. Diana or Deanna, I'm sorry if I messed that up. Uh, question regarding stamping over DIY cottage colors. I did the roller to put the paint over stamp and stamp with ink I used for paper crafts. That, that smeared when I very lightly sealed with a uh, big top. Um, so depending on your paint how or the ink you used, it depends on the open time. Um, so the IOD paint that or IOD ink, the permanent ink that we use, if if it's like warm and uh, dry, not too humid out, that seems to dry up and cure enough to seal it in about half an hour. 
but I'm not sure about that ink you used, why that's smeared. Um, that maybe it wasn't set up quite right. I don't know what the open time is on that that you're using for your paper crafts, but I would check check your your packaging on that and see see what it says on like when like how long it takes to cure and dry up. Um, because once it's dry, it shouldn't smear when you reactivate it unless it's not like a permanent ink. Uh, but the IOD ink that we use that you see me using on the videos, that's a permanent ink. And so once that's dry, I typically don't even have to seal over that. We do, but just for durability. But once once that ink's dry, you're you're pretty much done if you've used cottage colors underneath it because that's all got built-in sealers and permanent. I like these little candlesticks here. This is one of my favorite finds as far as candlesticks go for the last little bit. We usually find a few candlesticks every week, but I just like the style on these. And I can appreciate them because like these vertical uh, details here, that's, this was probably done by a machine, but that's hard to get that detail. Like by hand, I don't, I don't do candlesticks like that by hand. <laughs> All right, everybody seems to be liking the color. We got 400 people watching. Thanks, guys. Um, if you could, it would be awesome if you could share out. Uh, see if we can get that up to 500. That would be amazing. Uh, and also, when you share from Facebook, it lets us know that you shared. It, it keeps track of who shared our stuff for us. YouTube doesn't, so we can't really monitor that. But if you share from Facebook, um, we do a giveaway to two people a week from people who have shared our videos and our posts and things and send you guys some happy mail. All right. These are going to need two coats. They're a little shiny, but I think I have enough mixed up. We'll be fine. Ali says, we've had our first snow, but with the kids out of the house, I'd rather it didn't snow now. <laughs> you know, we had, we got four inches last week. I think it was right before Thanksgiving might've been, I don't even remember the day it snowed anymore. I was in the middle of doing the floors, but Jack and Redrick built a couple of snow forts out in the yard um, and then coerced me to have a snowball fight with them. And I got to say, I thought I was going to whoop up on them because I'm a pretty accurate thrower. I used to pitch in baseball in high school, and, you know, I still got that. Uh, but they, they, I was so wet and cold after I was done, they nailed me. And let's just say the fort that they built for me to be behind was not as big as their fort, and there was not a lot of cover. I feel like that was calculated. So Delissa, you can share from YouTube, but I don't really have any way to track that because YouTube doesn't say, hey, this person shared. Um, whereas on Facebook, we get an actual notification of the person that shared. And so we can see who shared through the week. Uh, but on YouTube, typically it doesn't, it just says, you know, it just shows us a number of how many people have shared the video, but it doesn't give us names or where they shared it or, or anything like that. So it's, it makes it a little difficult to track there. Um, but by all means, you can totally share the video out on YouTube. That still helps us out a bunch. Uh, we just can't send you happy mail because we don't have any way to contact you because it doesn't tell us who shared it. So Lou asks, I have a few things to paint. One looks shiny. Should I sand first? Um, you can sand first. I, if it's shiny, I like to just real quickly, like I'll, I'll do a whole dresser that's shiny in about five minutes with some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just scuffing up that shine off the paint and dulling it down to like a mat. You don't, ooh, might need to glue that back in. Oh, hang on. Let me fix the camera and then I'll address that loose top. Um, you don't, when, when you're painting with the paints that we use, you don't have to do a crazy amount of like sanding prep and things. They're all like mineral based, all natural, 
um, the DIY paint is clay based and it just, it, the stuff just sticks to most everything. Shiny though, for durability, I would say that if you paint it shiny, you're going to have a higher chance of getting like chips and dings and distress and maybe potentially sometimes where you don't want it. I mean, we distress everything around here, so we don't often care that much, but if you're sanding more than five minutes, even on something like a dresser, in my opinion, you're sanding too much. Like you don't need to take that down to the raw wood. You just need to scuff it up, give it a little tooth so that uh, the paint will, has something to stick to, knock that shine off a little bit, uh, and you should be good to go. Thanks for sharing, Delissa. All right. Oh, thanks for sharing in your business group, Vicki. Appreciate that. I'm just pulling these tags off. I just want the felt on the bottom. All right, I've got, we're, we're like half hour in, I painted four things. This is, uh, this is Zeb in chatty mode. <laughs> I, uh, Jamie is really, really good at the multitask. I am very like single task oriented. Uh, I can read comments and answer your questions or I can paint. <laughs> mm. Uh, if I get three or four things done in an hour, I'm going to be pretty happy with that. I think I am going to take a break from painting though and fill these holes and screw this in to show you guys that while I wait for this paint to dry. We might have to break out the heat gun. I do have it here, but uh, this is just this is going to need what I call a coat and a half. These ones are shiny. Those metal ones actually look like they're fine. I can start doing finish work on those. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some white linen and hit some high spots and some of those details and see if we can two-tone it. If that doesn't work out, if I don't like the way it looks, I'll just repaint it back over with this color. This, this mixture. This is a mix. If you're just joining, this is a five parts blue hills in the cottage color to one part gray skies to get it a little smokier than the blue hills is is pretty bright um so i'm just i'm trying to dull that down and get like a little bit more smoky color on it and this is not popping it like popped loose but it's not pulling out oh there we go the whole thing's coming all right where is that wood glue i'm just wood glue works with all sorts of stuff you know it's not just for wood it's a pretty good all around water-based glue and for the most part oh thanks carolyn <laughs> it is hard to like sit here and i'm just like i'm like thinking of like what i want to say next i'm like what do i want to talk what haven't i told them this week um but we we have actually a ton of stuff going on for the holidays, the boys decided they wanted to wrestle. Eliza is in cheer. So football season ended. Our team from uh, from Lehigh, uh, we lost in the semifinals. So we did not advance on to state finals. Last year, we won state, but we were a 5A school. And this year, Lehigh has been growing like crazy. They're talking about building a third high school in Lehigh. And we already have two 6A high schools that only have three grades in them because the high schools up here in our school district only have 10th, 11th, and 12th grade in them. And it's still a 6A school. And they're, they're talking about building another school, another high school. So anyway, we moved up to 6A and did not prevail and make it to the state championship at 6A. But we made it to semifinals, so I feel like that's pretty good. Um, so, but anyway, all that to say that uh, basketball season is in full swing. Um, I think official games that count towards your record start next week, maybe this weekend. I don't know. But so Eliza's cheering at all those games. So now we get to go watch basketball uh, and the boys are wrestling. Okay. Just going to pop some glue. So this has, this probably had a handle on it it's not really that broken just the handle is missing and i'm gonna put this knob in what do you guys think do you think with that color let me bring it close they're almost like an exact match is that too matchy matchy should i do a different a different color on this clock i feel like that's matches too much it's like tone on tone i want more of a contrast So 
it's okay to do tone on tone. It actually, when you can execute it good, it looks good, but that's not my goal currently. I'm trying to two tone stuff today. All right, glue in these holes. Check questions real quick. A different color. Yeah, too matchy, I agree. Yep. The knob is slightly greener, but I feel like it's gonna be too close. All right, got glue in my holes. Gonna grab some of this air dry clay. I could do wood filler, but this is like, this is in the crafting cabinet right there. We keep it there all the time. It doesn't have any like smells or anything funky going on. It's not Bondo. Uh, Bondo, if you're gonna use it, you know, well ventilated area, please. <laughs> or even mask up like a ventilator not even not, not like an n95 mask you're going to need you're going to need like a uh, pretty serious um mask like what i wear when i'm painting when you guys see me like doing the big spray paint stuff uh on walls and buildings so you may i, I don't know jamie may be watching in the background. Oh, okay, so there's a question. Zeb, what color does crinoline and sandy blonde pull? Um, crinoline, crinoline is a yellow, sandy blonde is like a brown. Uh, sandy blonde is more of like a brownish tan, whereas crinoline is like a yellow cream. If you mix them together, you get somewhere in between there and it's like a, it's like a darker creamy color that has like a little bit of hint of yellow, but the, the sandy blonde really tones the yellow in the crinoline down because it's like a brown uh, tan, whereas crinoline's like a yellow cream. Okay, holes filled. I got the drill out. I was ready today. I'm just gonna eyeball center because it's not that deep. Hopefully that drill wasn't too loud for you guys. I almost want to just paint this knob. What do you guys think about that? It's shiny, but it will take the paint. Um, I think my drill bit was small enough. I don't have to glue this in. I can, uh, it's enough that I can get it started. I tried to gauge it like that, but it's gonna, the uh, threads are gonna grab and go in. Okay, I will actually paint this first and then I think I'm gonna add this later since that's screwing in so easily. All right, Delissa wants the knob painted. Let me, let me paint this whole thing. What color do you guys think I should do this? I do have, let me see if I have enough Americana in here. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I wanna add a little more gray and go even smokier on this Blue Hills mix that I've got down here. So I'm gonna do a little more gray skies. I think I've got enough to paint this all up. So now we're five parts to two parts, but probably not five parts, probably like three parts because I uh, painted with it. So it's not a true five parts over here. All right, someone said to go like a whitish color. Yes, paint the knob, paint the knob. Oh, Nancy, it's the one that said go whitish. Okay. I can do that. I have I have the uh, the white linen right here. All right, so this is even smokier. I think we actually got closer to that skeleton key color that I was talking about earlier. That's a DIY uh, paint color, the clay-based one. This, this cottage color has the built-in sealer, which is why we love it for thriftless. We have, we just sent colors off to Debbie to get approved and send to the warehouse for, for what we're hoping is a spring uh, launch for more cottage colors color uh <laughs> and we'll see how that goes there she's debbie's gonna get them and then she's gonna send them to uh the the manufacturer and oh you know what hold on i wanted i was so eager to paint that i want to take the screws out of this will this screwdriver work it's small enough 
Thanks, Heather. Yeah, the floors are, we're loving the floors. The new color, the darker gray, you like that new color mix? Emma's making bracelets while I work. Yeah, that's, you know what? My favorite thing to do is, Emma, I like to queue up uh, videos on stuff I want to learn how to do or that I'm interested in while I work. Like, so I'm, I would say that I'm decently, I'm, I'm an adequate DIYer. I can, I can paint this stuff pretty easily without having to put much thought into it these days. So I almost always, if we're not filming or doing something with the kids, I'm, I'm, watching something while I paint. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like this, uh, the uh, the era of YouTube and, and social media's Facebook and videos and things. But I always, if I have like empty time where I'm not doing something that's like a, a real uh, thought out task, I got a video going or I'm not real big into podcasts. You guys watch podcasts? Jamie wants to do a podcast. She's 2024. She wants to do a podcast. And I'm kind of like, you know, our, our live streams on Wednesdays feel a lot like a podcast to me when we're just, you know, we're just chatting about the weather and what's going on and answering questions. Destiny asks, Zeb, what can I use to remove DIY clear wax off of a coffee table that's still splotchy after a month? It's painted with Hey Sailor. Ah, that's tough because if it's still splotchy, that means that that wax either hasn't cured up or there was something underneath the paint that that pulled up through the wax as it cured. Like it, Because the wax will create kind of like a bleed through in some instances. Or, you know, I've had it with some of those clay-based paints. They do have highs and lows even after they're all cured up. My suggestion would be not to give up on the wax if it's still splotchy. I before you try removing the wax, I would I like to go back and put a heavier coat of wax on and re-wax it because sometimes when it's splotchy, it's got spots that didn't get quite enough wax and spots that have a lot or the adequate amount. I would I would just go back with some more wax on that first before I did anything and see what happens. Maybe give it a couple weeks and see. It might take it longer because it's winter and cold and humid. Um, but that would be my approach because typically when I do that, it evens it out a little better than like going and sanding it and trying a different approach. Or Because when you sand it, you're going to lose a lot of your paint finish too to get down past where the wax would be enough to paint it. Hopefully that answers your question. Probably not the answer you wanted to hear. You know, more work, right? But... <laughs> Lori says, I've had found that navy is a hard color to make look good. Um, with, maybe with wax, I can't. Yeah. All the darker colors, when you wax them, they're going to get like highs and lows. And, and uh, sometimes you just got to work with that. And uh, honestly, if it's, got, if it's got a lot of highs and lows and it's been sitting for a while, typically an indication that you, you need to go heavier with your wax. Um, that's been my experience. If, if you try it more wax and it doesn't go, then at that point I'd be like, yeah, take, take that, take that uh, wax off. You might be having uh, some bleed through or this is breaking all the rules. So don't, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Jamie and I, if something's been sitting for six months or, or a year or whatever, if it's been waxed, we don't worry about it. We just paint it and move on with our lives because, you know, that's how we do. Um, and sometimes it chips and sometimes it doesn't. But usually uh, we, if we do that, it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. All right. So a little bit smokier. I don't know if you guys can even tell. You can see on the plate that it definitely got more gray than like this here. You can see the color on the plate here versus the color of the candlestick that I originally had. Um, and I was going to put a second coat on this, but as they're drying, they're looking pretty good. So I'll just distress them. There's a couple little light spots. I'll just distress it, work with it, and then we'll two-tone those. I got I to gotta heat gun those in a sec. What time is it? We have 15 minutes. Then I'm going to go check on Jamie and see if she needs a cold Sprite or something. I got to go. I looked for saltines earlier. She was requesting saltines. Uh, but I didn't find any of those. We have Ritz for days. I mean, if you need some Ritz, I got you. 
But I think Ritz are a little buttier, more buttery than she wants. Is I almost said butterier. Is that a word? Butterier. I'm gonna put that on a shirt. <laughs> I have Vicky, Zach. I have heat gunned my wax to spread it out more. <laughs> yeah, I'm not telling anybody, Vicky. I won't tell. Carrie says, I'm getting ready to use some sweet pickings on her frame. I love sweet pickings milk paint because honestly, like you can be the best milk painter artist in the world and then you go to use it and it'll surprise you every time and you get a different look every time like it's chippy it's good uh it, it looks like it was painted a hundred years ago almost every time i paint something with it like that's that's the dream right there um so i'm excited i'm excited that you're gonna get your frame painted because it should it should be look really good what color are you painting it? We do need to design some new shirts, uh, Caitlin said. I think Jamie was saying something about that a few weeks ago. Yeah, we, you know, all the things we got going on, uh, <laughs> stuff like that kind of falls on the wayside. We do have some fun shirts though the I love junk shirt and the junk in air shirt and sweater are, have been very popular. So I don't know if I'll ever be able to recreate this color again, but I really, really like it. The blue Hills mix blue Hills is good by itself, but I love, I love the smoky that the gray skies is adding to it. And this, so prime example, this was like a pretty shiny gloss finish. I didn't sand it. Um, I've got one coat on here and it is moving the paint around a little bit when I go back over it to try to even it out. So it's going to take two coats, but even though I didn't sand it, um, I think it's still going to adhere pretty well once it cures up and dries. Um, I can't, I think I need to paint this lip in here too. Sorry, I'm painting the back. It's super exciting. I'm going to try. I know I said I was going to two-tone those candlesticks, but I want to try to get this done enough that I can get that knob on it and see if we need to do the, the to paint it. That knob is like shiny, shiny, high-gloss porcelain knob. So we'll, it'll take the paint, but it might might need some heat gunning too. All right, you guys see any spots I missed? Okay, heat gun coming out. We're gonna get this one. We're gonna try to get the knob on the top of this one and see what it looks like. <laughs> Heather, the, the shirt with the junk in the trunk is too real. I've been well blessed. <laughs> Destiny, we don't feel bad if you've used wax to seal furniture. We do use wax on furniture quite often just because we like the way that it kind of, it finishes. It has like a really, if you don't buff your wax finish, it does have a really good kind of like matte sheen that we really love. Um, but you are correct. When we did that last dresser with the inlays, we like to seal over the top of the inlay with a liquid sealer because it's fast and if you are going to get maybe a little smearing um, you can do one coat of the sealer real quick just build light over the top 
And then on the liquid sealer, we used final finishes on that one, I believe. And then you can come back over and do a heavier like coat of sealer and you get really good results with those inlays. Terry says to get smoky colored, you have to add black. Yeah, we're trying to get a black. We're trying real hard to get a black. We don't currently have a black in the cottage colors. So we're, we're begging the manufacturer at this point to please let us have a black. We will see. We will see. I think the, the hesitation from the manufacturer is it takes so much pigment to get a black. They're worried about uh, cost of making it. Uh, at our current price point is is uh, what I've heard. So fingers crossed we can figure something out. All right, I'm almost ready. I'm going to put a second coat or what I like to call a half coat on there, a little coat and a half just touch up. Sometimes you don't need full coverage. Molly, I don't know of many family or friends in Missouri. I've got, I've got a friend that just moved out there last year, but they are, they are happily married and have like five kids, <laughs> maybe six. I can't remember now. Their oldest is uh, come and gone a bunch. All right. Okay, quick coat. Oh, and I do want to say I have a little high spot where I filled it. If you're going to fill your stuff, uh, whether it's Bondo or air dry clay or whatever you're doing, overfill so that you can sand flush. You don't want it to divot down when it dries. Every now and then I still get divots, but... If you overfill, that'll help you not have those because you can always sand back. I need to move that. I keep trying to dip in that white. Hopefully, Jamie will be feeling better this afternoon. We're supposed to be decorating for Christmas and filming that. Um, and we all know you don't want me to do that alone. Jamie will tell you. She'll be the first to tell you. I love Christmas decor. I do not love putting it up. <laughs> It's like it's like some deep ingrained thing from when I was a kid or something like I, I you know I don't even know why I push so hard against it but I almost throw a little fit when I have to Christmas decorate <laughs> I'm real good at hauling boxes and bringing you stuff but you know, past fluff in the tree, I'm out. <laughs> Renee, are you making fun of me because I can't remember how many kids my friend has? <laughs> it gets to be a lot. I'm from a very big family. I don't even know all of, like, so all my first cousins that I grew up with, I know pretty well, but my mom had trouble having kids for eight years. And then she had a surgery uh, when, when her and my dad, uh, you know, they, they were about done trying to have kids and going to adopt. In fact, I almost had an older brother, but the adoption didn't go through. And anyway, then they had me. So I have lots of cousins older than me because my mom's sisters were all having kids. But I, I know all of my first cousins like by name. And you think that that would be crazy, but there's literally like 100 of us on my dad's side and on my mom's side. So I got like 200 first cousins somewhere around there. 
I'm not even exaggerating. Uh, and then keeping track of all of their kids and and remembering everybody and trying to like absorb that at family reunions that I don't go to often enough. Like I just, it's hard. <laughs> Okay, real quick, heat gun, what are we at time-wise? Caitlin, I might go over just a hair. We got four minutes. So these, I'm talking about doing like a second coat. What I'm gonna do, you probably won't see it on camera. I wanna just take a little white and do this on the, uh, like on the details, just like a little white strip on the details. And I might tone that back with some gray too and see what we get, see if we can get like a really light gray. Um, and then I might do like a white wash on them just to, you know, because I love doing a wash. That's the only reason why, because I love it. Um, I think it looks good. But we'll see. So that's the plan on these. But honestly, I could just distress these and bring a little bit of that original color back through. And these could be done. You could even not distress them if you don't want to distress those. Like these, this, the cottage color paint, it's got a built-in sealer. I put one coat on those ones. I probably needed to do a coat and a half on those, but I've already changed the color um, to do this clock to be a little smokier. So I probably won't paint those. I'll just do some distressing on those on these ones. Oh, realize you can't even see what I'm talking about. Um, but that's the beauty of the cottage color. Like if you don't want to seal, you don't have to. Every now and then we'll wax and do some things, but that's more of like a colored, like dark or black or white wax. And it's not to seal the paint, it's just to add some more detail and, and uh, age to the piece. Sorry, I haven't been in the comments for a minute. Yeah. All right, so had a little light spot right there. I think I am going to distress this just a little bit to bring that black through because the, the smoky gray with the black is going to look really good. Let's see if I got this dry enough. Just real light. This is 220 grit. We never distress with anything lower than that. If you do like 150 or 100 or 80, you, a lot of times instead of a distressed look, it just looks like it's been scraped or scratched or dropped or rubbed up against something bad. It's not a good look. So 220. Now smooth it out. Even sometimes a wet distress on this since this paint is so fresh. If you wait a few hours, um, you're going to have a real difficult time wet distressing this cottage color. It might do it because the original finish on this was so shiny. But I mean, when I say you're going to have to put some elbow grease in it, I get ready. Because it does not, once it's sat for a little bit, it's on there. So I'm just hitting the edges where it would have some natural wear just from, uh, oops, missed a whole spot on the bottom of this lip, just from age and being moved or adjusted or set on a different shelf, picked up and handled, that sort of thing. Not, not like a crazy amount of, of distress, just, you know, just regular amounts of distress. Okay, so Kate looks like Caitlin asked answered a question for me about the uh, cottage colors. I would say it's about half as thick, like thickness wise, as the DIY paint. The, the DIY clay based paint is like nothing you've ever used before. It's literally like painting with liquid clay that's been pigmented. It's I love it so much, and the coverage is amazing. We do get really good coverage out of the cottage color for how thin it is and having a built in sealer. But if you're covering a dark color, there's a high chance you'll have to do like some touch up spots like you've seen me doing or do two coats. Um, but 
a lot of times, like on these, this is a one coat. Now, I feel like I got great coverage on that. It just depends on what you're painting and how shiny it is. Okay. Oh, black bars. That means we've been over time. Let me hit it real quick. Caitlin, if you got to run, I'll be fine. I'll, uh, I'm will i going to wrap it up in like a minute or two anyway. I just want to get this knob on here and get the clock face back in so they can see it. And then I'm going to go check on Jamie, see how she's done. I mean, she's 41 years old. She's She's going to live, but when you're sick like that, it's the worst. And you just don't want to move or get out of bed. And when you're thirsty, it's real nice when someone brings, brings you a drink. All right. Good enough to show you. Let me, honestly, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I grade it up enough. It's more than the other color. Do I need to paint this knob? What if I painted that white, but then we're going to lose the silver on there? Is that too contrasty? I'm going to come check comments. Oh, Jamie is watching. She just said, I'm good. It's hard to tell who's Jamie and who's Caitlin because they're both commenting as Jamie Ray Vintage right now. <laughs> Looks good. Leave it. Okay. I'm going to, I, you know what, if I do change it, it's as, it's as hard as taking unscrewing this and putting it back in there. Uh, and painting it and putting it back in. Like if I paint this white or like do a grayish color, man, that's a long screw. I'm gonna have to get after this. Um, I can I can easily unscrew this and um, man, <laughs> I hope I drilled my hole deep enough. This was a long bolt or long screw on here. Uh, I can easily change this color out if I want. That's the beauty of painting things. Like if you get tired or something or want to change it up or five years down the road, your decor changes. Oh no. Oh no, I loosened up the top. Uh, hold on. I might have to pull this back out. There's a nut on the bottom side keeping the screw tight. <laughs> um, but that's the beauty of the paint is you can you can change your whole look uh, just by painting something a different color. Adding in a couple new pieces. Oh, Emma wants to see it white. Judy says, just get a different knob. I agree with Judy. Unfortunately, I don't have one on hand. We have a ton at the shop, but I was looking through stuff I had here quick. Uh, and I forgot if I talked about this or not. Eliza woke up late, so I had to run her to school. Jamie was sick. I ran Eliza to school right before I had to get ready for this live stream. And the knob was an afterthought. <laughs> okay. I gotta, I'm going to be off camera for just a sec. I got to grab some pliers to tighten this up. got a little it's got like a double nut under here like a retaining nut okay tight enough that it won't slip hopefully and loosen up because it was just spinning but also hopefully not too tight because I don't want to break this porcelain knob by pinching it down too tight Molly I agree Jamie does do great staging she likes to, uh, she tries to be humble and say that she's not that good at it, but she's very good at it. Oh, Leslie, I do like that idea. Some copper on here could be a cool take on that. That's the back. It's covered up. All right, almost there. Looks like I got it tight enough for... We're almost down to the bottom. Who knew that this was going to be the hardest part of the video? So Lorraine is loving the contrast between the knob and the clock. I think because it's got like the silver accents on it. I, I don't know that they're even silver. They're probably just shiny pressed tin. Um, that it does, it does have a different look. And then this face goes in here like this. I got to get the glass in here, but I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you what a little bit of paint did to change this. It was black before, 
um, we did some light distressing the knob on the top uh, you know, it took me an hour to get there, but we got it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for the share outs. We really appreciate it. It helps us a ton. If you want to get the paint products, you can find all of that at jamierayvintage.com. Uh, we appreciate you supporting our small business, especially through the holidays here. It helps us out a ton. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't do my uh, DIY thing because Jamie's not here. So, you know, watch us for more DIY because more DIYs are coming. And we will catch you guys on the next video. Hopefully, we get Christmas up, whether, whether it happens this afternoon or tomorrow. Might be tomorrow at this point. Uh, we're going to be decorating for Christmas. That should be our uh, Thursday afternoon slash Friday. We'll see how the week goes video. So keep an eye out for that. Should be fun. We've got the new floors in. The house is looking great. We're going to get it all dressed up for Christmas. And uh, it's, it's while I don't like doing the decorating, I love it when it's done. It's my favorite time of year. All right, guys, we'll catch you later. Have a great day.